Tsunami Studios. Mighty Morphin issue number one. So I recently jumped aboard the Boom Studios Power Rangers train. I still want to go back and read all those earlier issues before Dragon New Dawn and the Ranger Slayer stuff. But it's a new number one and it's Power Rangers. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to check it out. I knew nothing about the title before going into this. So I didn't know exactly what to expect. I did think it was going to be our original team. Though I will say I was pleasantly surprised to see it's the other new, it's the other original team. By that I mean Rocky's here, Adam's here, Aisha's here. I don't know a lot about those characters. I, I'm more familiar with, you know, Zach, Trini, and Jason, but I, I'm fine. I'm okay with it. Like, I have nothing to say that's negative about having these people. I just wasn't expecting to see them. And this was a pretty cool issue. I will say it did a lot of things I liked. It set up a kind of, not really a new status quo, but just it gave me some stuff I didn't know I wanted to see from this book. And when I saw it, I'm like, yeah, I, I, can, I can support this. I think I can invest in this. I do believe this is one of two new titles that is being rebooted for Power Rangers. So that's kind of exciting. I like that. So we open up this book on a planet. And I'm going to get the planet's name here because, again, I'm not too ingrained in the lore. I know enough where I could like pick, pick certain characters out and certain things. But the planet is called... Artavias, I think that's how you pronounce it, and this is the planet that Zordon is from. And we get like an opening scene of Zordon here, where his people, or he's part of this like guardian army who's fighting these creatures and trying to make them, you know, just get off their land and that kind of stuff. And and you kind of get like this idea in play that they kind of force these other creatures to retreat, and then Zordon's questioning like maybe they'll just come back in stronger numbers and it's like i'll just take the victory zordon it's all good but then we cut back to the present day and we see that billy is working with alpha 5 and zordon to get information on this new ranger now there's a new green ranger running around they're trying to figure out who it is they can't really confirm this person's identity and that's like the main crux of this book i think that's going to be like the big mystery that they're going to set up a reveal for who is the green ranger now, if this is a storyline that happened in later seasons of Mighty Morphin or in other incarnations of the of like the lore, then I don't know what it is because I I really I was trying to think. Well, Tommy's here being the White Ranger, so I don't know who this Green Ranger is going to be. That might be a storyline we come back to. Then we just got like a nice moment where all we this is kind of our introduction moment to all our characters. Actually, we see them all just chilling at a diner, just eating. You know, we're trying to cash in on that Riverdale feel. By the way. They should do a Riverdale Power Rangers thing. I know Power Rangers is still on Nickelodeon. It's still going strong. But if you want to get like some more money, maybe put it on the CW. I think that could be really fun. Just kind of take the, the, take the entirety of the show, move it to a bigger budget on a more adult network, make it a little bit of a Riverdale thing. But I digress. Let's not talk about that. And everyone's just having their conversation like, well, who could the new Ranger be? And it's like, yeah, that's the whole point of the book. And I'm, I'm like, okay, that's fun. I think it's Adam, who's the Black Ranger, that's like, well, maybe it's Draken. I mean, is he still locked up in his cell? Yes, <laughs> but I, it's fine. Like, I get you're doing this, but there's a lot of this book. I'm just like, this is this felt really long, and I think it's longer than the average book. Like, I didn't actually do a page count when I read it. I should have, you know? It just, it felt long to me. I'm like, we really need this long in the diner? Like, we could jump around other places, but we, we're setting up a bunch of stuff. We do have some moments where we see all of our uh, these characters in other places, you know, Rocky's talking to. So I'm going to assume it's his brother, Matthew. And they're like, oh man, football is way cooler than martial arts, but y yeah, yeah, that's very American of you. And then we see Tommy comes and he's like, come on, Rocky, let's go. And Matt's like, oh, me and Kim used to date. And he's like, what? Why didn't you tell me that before? Now, I'm not too familiar with the character of Rocky, but I do not like this character that much. I think he's kind of boring, kind of exactly what I expect you'd want to make like the Red Ranger cool. You know, he's kind of like a little jokey, a little funny. I think people who wanted like the jokester role filled for their favorite colored ranger He's a good fit, but I don't really care about him. I think he's my least favorite one we saw in this book. We get some other moments here. We get a moment with Skull and Bulk, and Skull has a girlfriend named Candace, and they kind of get to a little argument about like what's cool and hip when it comes to like a band and fitting in, and Bulk's like, dude, she just likes drama. She's a drama queen, and it's cute. I mean, it's your classic 
like standard stuff when it comes to the genre and this universe. But uh, it just it's a comic book, so I'm kind of hoping we stir a little bit away from the high school drama. Like if it's television, let's lean into that. That's where you can keep the budget cheap. You got a comic book. Let's go a little bit more crazy, you know? But it's cool. I mean, it's nice seeing those characters again. Skull and Bulk, very important characters to the mythos here. So they're fine to see them. I'm okay with that. And then we get a moment here with Kimberly and Aisha. And it's like, maybe it's Billy who's the Green Ranger. He has access to all the grid stuff. So maybe it's him. And then I like that Kimberly's like, it's not it's not him. Like, it, there's no way it's going to be Billy. Which, of course, of course it's not going to be Billy. And we do get a moment earlier on. I can't remember if it was before or after the Aisha and Kimberly stuff. But we see... Lord Zed is kind of like in a comatose state where he's not awake and all of his servants, now I can't remember all their names, but Goldar is there, Babu is there, they're just watching him like, oh man, what are we going to do if Rita comes back, what are we going to do to make this happen, a lot of crazy shit going on, and Babu has this idea like, hmm, me thinks we could be in the better favor with our lord if we captured the Green Ranger, so the four of them have this brilliant plan they're gonna release a giant panda creature into angel grove and that's just what they do and now all of our power rangers come to stop it so it's like this is where it's like very formulaic towards the actual show here's the high school stuff here's the scene with the villains here's the big monster they're coming to fight this one's called pandemonium that's cool our rangers morph up it's cool it's fun it looks great and I'm going to get the artist's name on this book right now because I love the way this book looks. Marco Rina is the illustrator colored by Walter Biamote. I, I could probably pronounce that wrong, but man, does this book look good. It's so crisp. The colors are so vibrant. Everything about it looks really well. I love the lines. It's just gorgeous. So yeah, they are fighting the pandemonium creature. And then in comes the Green Ranger to pretty much just beat the shit out of the pandemonium. And like they're all like, okay, I kind of like this ranger. Maybe he'll help us defeat this. And this is where we get the information that the pandemonium creature here does come down from these other people. He doesn't know who Lord Zed is, but he was sent to capture the ranger. And it doesn't work, so our rangers are kind of losing. But the green ranger manages to use like a super ultra power move with the uh, dragon dagger to take him down. And then he just leaves. And you're like, oh, okay, well he just left and it's not Draken, so we don't really know who this is. And then we go back to our films with like, oh, well, of course that failed. We're dumb. We're the dumb sidekicks to the Lord Zed. And Lord Zed does just wake and he's like, all right, well, that was fun. It's time to get serious about doing this. And we're going to get some we're going to get some shit done now, boys. Let's get to it. And I love it. He's just like, as you cowards can see, I am still very much alive. What a Doctor Doom thing to say. I absolutely love it. Lord Zed, that that shot, that like full body shot of Lord Zed looks incredible, by the way. I absolutely love it. And then we just see, we get an end shot here where we're just seeing Skull with his girlfriend Candace. And she's seeing somebody in the alleyway as they're walking down. She's like, oh, that's something familiar to me. And she's like, can you go grab my phone from the restaurant? So she goes down the alley alone, and we see that in there, she turns back into this alien creature. And she is... I'm not familiar. I'm going to assume it's the same species as Zordon, since we saw that at the beginning. Or it's the species that Zordon's people were fighting. Now, I can't remember for the life of me. Elter is what she says. Elter must be protected. I'm going... I don't really... Remember, if somebody could explain that to me, because I just, there's a lot of stuff in the Power Rangers mythos, and like I said, I've seen enough of the TV show Mighty Morphin to know what's going on, but I don't know every little detail, like I couldn't name to you, like, like I couldn't name where Zordon was from, but I could tell you what he is, <laughs> you know, so it is what it is, but... It's cool, interesting, I probably will continue to read this, maybe it depends if... Uh, the next issue is really worth it, but it was pretty fun, a good way to get back into the Power Rangers lore if you wanted to experience a book that you haven't really read before, but you're like, there's so many of the other Boom Studios books, where do I start with Power Rangers? I'd say right here. You're pretty much getting everything you want anyways. Tommy is there, Kimberly's there, Zordon's there, Lord Zed is there, every character you want is pretty much there, and you're getting some cool Ranger stuff, so I don't have that many complaints as to... It's kind of formulaic to the TV show, and I kind of want more from it because it's a comic book, but I get why you don't. If the formula works, don't fix it. If that's what your core audience wants, works for me. I don't have anything wrong with that. So, Mighty Morphin, Issue 1, 
I am going to give a 7 out of 10. Now thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.